What's up everybody, Jeffrey McAvoy here. So good of you to be back. Winter is in full swing and now is obviously the perfect time to do some maintenance work on your motorbike. I'm going to rebuild the whole front end of this bike because the fork seals are leaking, which is uh, detrimental to uh, the ride quality and thus the safety of the motorbike. And I will take this opportunity to freshen it up a bit and do a bit of cosmetic uh, work, which needs to be done as well, you know, just to keep things nice and shiny because it's a beautiful bike when it's all nice and shiny. So without further ado, let's get cracking, whip the tools out and, um, and off we go. I'm going to start by disconnecting the battery and uh, removing the tank. There we go. And while the battery is going to be disconnected, I will put it on charge. If you don't have one of these, I definitely suggest you purchase because these are very good. They, um, this is not a sponsored video. Um, but what these things do is they uh, not only float charge your batteries, but sometimes they also simulate uh, draw of current as if you were using the starter motor, for example, which in this case doesn't have one because you have to kickstart it like a man. Anyway, um, I just hardwired this thing on the battery and so I'll, uh, I'll connect it um, while I'm working on it. Why not? I think this is 5 eighths. Where are all my spanners? Damn it. There we go. Or is it? Is it? Is it? Is it though? I don't know. Okay, anyway. Don't forget to close the tap, of course. There we go. Dry as a bone. It's not been ridden in a while. Yeah. Oh, come on. Pop. I also bought some, uh, a few of these boxes to put things in. Whoop. It's so much better to work at a decent height. And these, these hoists are not that expensive. Surely it's an investment, but uh, well worth it, if you ask me. Off with the tank. Yeah. Am I forgetting something? I am forgetting something, you f***ing moron. My goodness, okay, wow. There's a strap under here. I completely forgot about it. Oh man. I've been away for too long, man. Right, there we go. Didn't forget to be an idiot this morning. How about, yeah, yeah, just for kicks. Oh boy. <laughs> man, it's gonna look so good. F yes, I've always wanted to have it that color. With the tank removed, it makes access so much easier to, the, to uh, the various components and you don't risk scratching it because there's no tank to scratch, as you can see. Now, if you're afraid to forget where these things go, you could just label them. Um, or write it down or whatever, so I think I'll do that real quick. Okay, so I will label this one. Uh, this is for the high beam, so it's green. There's turn signal, amber. And obviously, last one, last but not least, oil pressure, most important. Red, oil pressure. These are now labeled and can thus be removed. Okay, so this is for the uh, left hand. Can't go wrong with these, just two. The, the clips are missing, by the way. Okay, so I can thread these out. Ah, you know what, F it. I'll just, I'll just take the whole grommet out. Just push that out. Careful of the sharp edges on the inside. Right, well, that was more 
more of a pain in the ass than I thought. Um, so instead of disconnected the switch here, I just removed it and uh, I did have to disconnect, however, the uh, ignition switch. So now off with the fasteners on the side of the headlight. There we go. Oh, that was surprisingly loose. Now I can proceed to removing the wiring loom from within the headlight. Careful of the sharp edges, not to damage the wiring. And will the switch go through as it, as it is? That would be so nice, and of course it's not. Of course not, of course not. Okay, because I didn't want to go through the trouble of labeling these, but it looks like I don't have much of a choice. So there we go, brown and green on the side. Remember that, folks. Brown and green on the side, there we go. And this brown and white on the vertical side. Oh, and another brown and green to make things very easy. Okay, there you go. That's precisely why I didn't want to, to remove it. Okay, can I get away with just disconnecting these two and, and sort of squeezing it through? No, damn it. Okay, ah, oh. okay, there we go. So I'll, I'll just put, ah, oh, damn it. Which side was it on? Ah, oh, man, was it on the seven or the eight? Shit. Okay, we'll do it like that. And this is the uh, green which goes on the side, there you go, and this one up here. I just don't want to go through the, tr the trouble of labeling it, that's it. I'm lazy, I'm a lazy fool. Okay, there you go. Uh, so that's it, I'm left with the light bowl. <sighs> which, hello, definitely needs a clean, look at that. How dirty is it, huh? And it still has the original stickers, which is pretty cool. Uh, I, could re I could remove them, but I like them there, uh, even if they're worn. I know that they are, you can buy these actually, but uh, I don't want the, the repros. I think that it has a nice bit of patina to it. So I'll leave that there and just clean, clean all of this, see? Look at that, looks brand new. And of all things, I use the product which is called Triumph and some elbow grease. That's the problem with uh, being a perfectionist is that I, I can't settle for a job half done. Before and after, this is gonna take a while. Somehow taken out of context, this might seem a little weird, but trust me, it's worth it. <laughs> totally worth it. Anyhow, now that that's done, can proceed to removing the switch gears. I took it completely apart and I wish I hadn't uh, because it was a, a real pain in the ass to put back together. I spent way much more time on this than I will dare admit. The time that you think I spent on this multiplied by 10 and add another five years. Uh, that's about the, uh, the time I spent on it. Um, more seriously though, there are there is a detent ball uh, and a spring in the high and low switch, and there's another spring in the uh, signal, um, the signal lever. So the good thing about this is that I did uh, clean up the contacts and everything. So it, it's a good thing done, but uh, it's a real, a real pain in the ass and uh, a genuine time consumer. So if you have lots going on in your mind or you don't have much time ahead of you, leave it alone <laughs> because you'll go nuts. So uh, there you go, but um, was it worth doing? I think so, because I, I'll never take it apart again. <laughs> That's for sure. And, um, and now it's done, now it's done. So it's all clean, everything works fine. Um, so there you have it. Into the box with the rest of the junk. <sighs> Man, 
Oh, okay, I'm losing my mind, man. Yeah, I know you can buy these new and stuff, but uh, you know, why buy it new when it still works and you can just fix it, you know what I'm saying? Get in there. Come on, man. Haven't you done pissing me off today? What the f Okay. Doesn't want to go in the drawer. The drawer doesn't want to go back in the drawer. What the hell, man? I'm going to take a break right now. The rest of the dismantling of the handlebars rather uneventful until comes the time to bleed the brakes because you do have to remove the master cylinder in order to remove the um, the handlebar or at least the control on that side so uh, got my handy bleeding kit we'll be changing the disc as well by the way yeah come on how long has this been there for Wow, okay, that's tight. Wow. Uh, not looking forward to cleaning the spokes. And there's plenty of air in there, holy crap. Okay. So now that the system is uh, empty, um, as much as as possible, it's time to equip out these uh, box and red wrenches. Uh, is that what they're called? I can't remember. Uh, flared, at least. Now, the advantage of this, if you, <clears throat> hang on, there we go. The advantage of this is that you have one, two, three, four um, areas which come in contact with the nut which is to be released. Whereas on your regular uh, open ended spanners, you only have two. Um, so, you have a lot less chances of get of you have a lot less chance of damaging stuff with these, and they're specifically designed to go through the tube, so to speak. So there you go. That's uh, that's why it's very important to get the the right tools for the right job. Very important. Nine sixteen is the size. There you go. So holding it up here so that the level is higher and that should do the trick uh, however i am going to be annoyed by this in the near future so i do have in my toolbox which is over there um, <clears throat> These things, these things, oh, there you go. These are um, often uh, found inside, there you go, whatever. I'll just, I'll just do like that, plug that up so that it doesn't spew oil everywhere. I'm not going to uh, take this apart because the other thing was a pain in the ass. This is going to be even more so, surely, so I think I'll just, Give it a good clean and um, and move on. Now that that's done, I can already give it a good clean. And also a bit of a polish. Right, so we are sticking with the 916th spanner which enables us to remove the two nuts, which, are, which were frighteningly loose, um, of the, uh, the handlebar. Let's try not to punch myself in the face. There we go. Everything has been taken off the front, so now we have to concentrate on getting the wheel off, the mud guard, and then we can finally take the fork off the bike and apart.
I'll go ahead and, and polish this some other day because I've spent uh, more than half a day polishing stuff and I'm just, I'm just so done. So I'll clean the inside and outside and, and whatever. I'll do that some other time. That is for me of the future. Get the half inch drive once again. And proceed to remove this part right here. There we go. And the spindle should come free. Removed. And I'll give that a clean and check the bearings and whatnot. So checking the steering head braces, the uh, the bearings in here, um, which I know, because I noticed the other day they are tapered roller bearings, which uh, which replace the original uh, ball and cups, which uh, which is good. And the stankins, stanchions, whatever they're called, seem to be holding very nicely. Okay, so I'll take the cowper off. And then uh, unclamp the bolts up here, up there, and uh, remove the forks. Prior to that, it would make good sense also to drain them. There are tiny little drain plugs here. I just noticed something interesting here. The right hand, <coughs> sorry, the, um, the right hand uh, fork, um, I don't know what part this is called, is new because I can tell that it is CNC machined, whereas this one on the left is a cast item, which is original. That's a funny thing to note uh, regarding the history of the motorbike. So we're looking at the steering head bearing race right here. And although you didn't really feel the notchiness, if I run my finger in here, I can actually feel that it is, um, it's no good. So we're definitely going to be ordering a new set of steering head uh, bearings. I also noticed on the wheels, don't know if the microphone picks that up. I'm just get closer to it, I suppose. There we go. The bearings, although they didn't make any noise, do feel kind of rough in there. So we're going to change those as well. So here we are, uh, the front fork has been completely dismantled and next step is just to assess what needs to be uh, replaced. So I'm thinking of the steering head bearings, we've come so far, might as well do it now. Uh, they are in a pitiful shape. The uh, front wheel bearings as well and might as well do the rear wheel bearings while we're at it. We'll come to that at a later part of the episode. First I'd like to get this thing rebuilt because there are nuts and bolts everywhere and time flies in between shoots so uh, you know I'd just like to get it back together before I forget where everything goes. So time to go online and order some parts and magically have them appear right in front of me um, as such. This weighs, oh, I don't know, about a hundred bucks. We'll speak more about the damage later on. So, what have we here? All the parts come from Andover Norton. They have many original parts and uh, remanufactured parts with the original tooling, or so they say. All their items come neatly packed in these little paper bags. Because l'environnement. Fun thing about that is that you can uh, have fun the old fashioned way as well. So what have we here? Bearing, steering, oil and frame. Nice. One of these with the little dust protector, that's good. And another one, because I do hope that they are both the same. <gasps> Damn it, is it? Oh yeah, that looks okay. Fine, perfect, perfect. What else do we have? 
This is made in Portugal. Don't know what it is. A bearing. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bearing, it says. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay, yeah, so we have a bearing, probably for the rear. Uh, 6204. What's really annoying though is that the, uh, the references they have on, on these uh, little uh, boxes and the reference that they have is different, so you can easily mix things up, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. But okay, I'm guessing that's a rear wheel bearing. 067604. What is that? Another bearing. I have three of these, so that's definitely one of, uh, no, two are for the front wheel and one and this one are going to be for the rear. Okay. Okay, so there's 067604. That's the second one. Two. And three bearings. What is this? This looks like the oil seals. Yes, most definitely the front fork oil seals. Uh, much better quality than the ones that are received in the box of parts with the bike. I don't know if I already showed you that, but okay, these are the front oil seals. Perfect, perfect. All of these things. Ah, dust excluders for the for these bearings. There you go, pair of those. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, what else did I buy? I bought a, a shitload of stuff. Oh yeah, these are the... Um, these are the uh, oil drain seals, which I will leave in here for now, so as not to lose them. And what the heck is this? A3207 uh, washer for the steering bearing. Okay, uh, just in case they need washers. Right, okay. In order to remove the steering head bearings, we're going to need uh, something that looks like a drift. I'll use this, and a hammer, preferably a heavy one. Now if you look down there, come here, come on, come on, look down there. There's a lip on the inside of the steering head, and that's what you're going to aim to strike on with your drift and hammer. Here it comes. There you go. So here we have the uh, bearing race and the uh, thickness washer, which are both going to be replaced. Now you know that the bearing is worn. When you get these shiny, uh, these shiny areas, that means that the uh, rollers have really pressed into the cage right there. Uh, and you can very likely though feel uh, an asperity, as it were, um, and so that's definitely signs that this bearing needs to be renewed. Now, for the record, this one uh, was made in Italy. Italia, si grazie mille, i pasta e tutti. Why is there Italian bearing on a British bike? You tell me, eh? Eh? Eh, che questo? I should be wearing gloves for this. Usually when I think something like that, never takes long before I hurt myself. Ah, son of a bitch, I fucking knew it. Damn it. <laughs> fucking idiot, man. What was I saying, huh? Gray's knuckles. Stupid idiot, man. So I'm back and uh, yeah, I, I do this so you don't have to, people. Wear gloves. Don't be an idiot.
There you go. So funny thing is the top bearing race is the original uh, Timken made in England fitment, whereas the bottom one uh, is made in Italy for some reason. So definitely this indicates that the, uh, the bottom bearing at least has been replaced at some point in the bike's life. It only has 4,000 something miles on the clock. Uh, and given the wear that this has, I strongly doubt that uh, the, the mileage is original. Um, putting on top the fact that this bearing has been already changed. So it's probably been around the clock once, if not twice. So um, there you have it. That's buying classics from the outside. It looked beautiful. Um, didn't have a whole stack of invoices, but in reality, there you have it. Things are slightly different. Uh, and I did well. I did well to buy a set of these washers as well. Because as you can tell, they have been mildly damaged by some intensive hammering. Now, when have I heard that one before? Right, so make sure that the, the holes are clean and free of dirt. Always clean your holes, people. You know this. Here's a, little, uh, here's a little tip for you. Since these uh, bearing races are pressed into the frame, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these into the freezer. I'm going to go have lunch. And, um, and once, uh, once I've had lunch, they will have contracted sufficiently to be gently pressed into place in the frame. Bit of a tip for you there. Off for lunch then. Right, quickly, quickly, before it thaws. And of course, don't forget to drop the, uh, the little washer in there. Please be the correct size. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, make sure you insert it the right way in, which is cone that way. And I'm going to use Need to use the old bearing race to press this one in. So we're going to need another hammer. <laughs> Damn it, fucking idiot, man. There we go. Just thawing. You need to want to evenly press it down. Now here's the trick, since we have to go below the recess, you're going to want to put the, uh, the pressing bearing, I should call it, in the same way as the first. So that leaves a little bit of a lip so you can, you can um, um, press it out afterwards. Because if you put it like so, you are going to be entering a world of pain, believe me. Oops, okay. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, I'll just go a little more. There you go. See, it's already pressed in. There we go. So then go this way. And you'll notice when you when uh, when you arrive home in the in the um, in the recess here, when it starts to ring and your hammer bounces off, that's that's uh, that's when you're against it. So you don't no need to go further than that. Make sure we are um, properly pressed in and confirm that by just visually assessing the situation. And it does look like we are, we are home. Yes, the little ring isn't moving. So that's it, that's done and dusted. Piece of threaded, threaded bar here. Just it's sacrificial, as it were. I literally don't care. It is sacrificed for the good of the motorbike, as it were. Okay, so before, before I go and open something else on my hand, I'm going to, I'm going to do like so. Oh man.
There you go. Do the same for the underside and, um, and we'll be good to go. Well, not quite. Now, the bearing races have been pressed in successfully. Um, so now I'm going to let them uh, get back to room temperature before proceeding to the next step. Um, as, at any rate, I'm going to be able to uh, remove the uh, tapered roller bearing from the steering stem and, um, and then liberally grease all of these um, and put it back together. Right, so I have the steering stem here uh, with the old uh, roller bearing, um, which is uh, to be removed. So there are some fancy presses and uh, bearing extractors, but what I'm simply going to do is to um, hit the back of the inner race with a drift. Um, and while the, um, while the T piece here is placed in uh, a vise. I'll do that off camera to save some time editing and whatnot, so off we go. Well, changed my mind, I'm going to show it to you after all. So I just chocked the uh, T-piece in the vise with some wooden blocks so it wouldn't get damaged. And I'm going to use a drift to, uh, to, to drive this bearing off the shaft. Um, I am going to uh, speed run this thing, so uh, off we go. Now for the reassembly of the uh, bearings, I'm going to use this uh, Castrol high temperature grease, which is a uh, beautiful all-rounder, pretty much. Uh, serves many different purposes, and it says that it's for wheel bearings and chassis operatings at high temperatures. So there you have it. This is the, the best product, um, in my opinion, to use. And um, I do... Um, by the way, this is not a sponsored video. I, uh, do intend to remind this to you. I have no sponsors uh, besides uh, my patrons. So they have it. On with the build. Well, that was a bit more of a pain in the ass than I expected. Uh, there is a setting that you need to do, which is called a preload on the steering head bearings, which I'm not going to do now. I want it to be fully loaded with the forks and, and well, you know, the whole shebang. I just want it to be rebuilt before I set this. This is literally the last thing that I'm going to do. Um, so we're going to move on to something else. With that done, it's time to go uh, and go on and change the, uh, the front wheel bearings and the disc. Now, the problem I have here is that there is no, it's a 9 16 socket and I, I don't have a socket which is slim enough to fit in between the flange and the uh, bolt itself. So here's a little trick for you that you won't find elsewhere uh, or in any um, type of books. What I'm going to do, I'm going to un untighten and I'm going to firmly jam a flat bladed screwdriver in between the, uh, the hub. There we go. Okay, I'm against it and hopefully I'm looking to rip. There we go. It is released the tension. There we go. Right, so now we have the, the wheel on the bench before I go and, um, and clean everything. Um, we need to remove the bearing, so <laughs> I finally found a, a set of drifts, and uh, there we go. Drift 
trying not to damage this fixture. There you go, that will be oof, ultimately cleaned. Okay, this is some old grease. And some, oh man, some genuinely old <laughs> grease. This is, wow. Anyhow. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. And so out comes this bearing. Nice, beautiful shaft. Inside here we have the, um, the bearing uh, cover, as it were. And there we go. Voila. This one's actually not too bad. It's going to be, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if the mic's going to pick that up. Right, so here are the dust excluders, which were not for the steering head. And one of the bearings here, as expected, is one of those sealed for life units. So um, these have like a uh, nylon or plastic rubbery flange to it. And so they're greased for life. You don't have to take these apart and repack them. Um, so in theory, yeah, in theory, this part shouldn't be required anymore because it, as you can see, it is designed to keep the, um, keep the grease within the bearing on the inner side of the hub uh, whereas with this one we won't be needing it i think better be the same man okay what i'm going to do uh off camera is just going to support it like so and give it a whack with the dead blow hammer like so and and uh, that should be that should be it yes and i'm going to support it like so with the second bearing and give it a whack on this end there we go and that is that okay right so now you can clearly see hang on let me just clean this part here of its 70 year old grease or whatever Whoa, what the hell there you go as you can see this no longer serves a purpose, but for originality's sake, I will leave it there. Also, fun fact, the bearings are sided. Um, there's, you really can't go wrong. As you can see, one of them is uh, bigger than the other. Okay, well, from here on, installation is the reverse of removal. You get the idea. See this right here? I cleaned the spokes. Now, now I'm obliged to do the rest. Damn it. Yeah, well, time for a time lapse. I've been at this for way too long than I'll ever want to admit. I've had enough time to have dinner, a beer, two kids, new car, and it's still not finished. So I'm going to finish this while the wheel is back on the bike. Um, and I'll do the hub as well with a toothbrush and whatnot. And then I'll end with the actual rim. So I'll do this later. Right now I'm going to focus on the, um, on the spindle. So anyhow, 
get this done and move on to the forks and, and then rebuild this thing, man, because it's been so long, so long. Make definite sure that the, uh, the lip right here is free of dirt and debris, because otherwise that makes a thickness that which you don't want. So yes, that does actually locate down there, so it is important to keep it, even if your bearing is sealed. Right. Perfect. Now I'm going to give this thing a clean, slap the, the uh, brake disc back on, the new Dunstall brake disc back on, and, um, and uh, leave it until the end, of course. Off we go. We finally, finally get down to the part which uh, has brought us here. Now, the fact that these uh, oil seas are leaking, the most difficult part in this is uh, to remove, there's a little Allen screw in here, and for some reason I can't find the adequate socket for it, so um, <laughs> I have uh, sacrificed an Allen key on which I have just um, uh, ground the uh, extremity of, so I can use it as um, as uh, as a key. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of an unorthodox way of doing it, but um, but that's the only way that I found of uh, doing it successfully. There you go. That was a bit of of a tense moment, wasn't it? Okay. So again, I repeat, this is not, uh, this is an unorthodox way of doing it. Now, when you remove the screw, be ready to catch some fluid, which will spill. So let me just place my little tub on the, on the floor here. This, as you can see, is a spring, which will be replaced by a progressive spring, but I'll be back to that later. So right now, I can withdraw the stanchion, stanchion, I can't, I really don't know how to pronounce that word, but it can be removed. So um, now we are free to remove the seal from here. And while we're at it, oh, there's still a bit of fluid in there. Uh, definitely going to uh, give this uh, fork leg a polish. So I'm going to go polish my leg right now. If you don't mind me saying. Maybe it's, maybe it's by design that it has this shape. I'm not sure. But um, anyhow, we'll try to get under the lip right there. And then just... Yeah. Ah, back to the vise. And there it is. Okay. Oh, actually, I was wrong. It was placed in the right way. So you have the little uh, spring in here. Don't know if you can see it. The lighting isn't too good. And sim what the hell? And simply just Press it in by hand. You can feel when it'll arrive at the very bottom. And voila! There is a little seal at the bottom inside there, which definitely needs changing. Um, I, I made the mistake of not ordering one, so it's going to go back as is. And from now on, installation is the reversal of removal. And um, <clears throat> is a bit of an addendum, as it were. Uh, this seal was actually placed in the correct position. It's, uh, see, it has the uh, little spring on the inside right here. Um, so it was placed in the, in the correct fashion. It's just that I'd never seen one with such a shape. Anyhow, I hope that the problem will be solved. Now I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and, and polish my leg. 
and uh, do the other one. So there we have it, a nicely polished fork leg. And from here on end, uh, installation is the reversal of removal. So uh, let's get cracking, shall we? Got progressive fork springs. There is um, a, a way to fit these. And I'm not sure what it is. Gotta look that up. Be back with you in a sec. Hello, I'm back. Oh, damn it, I forgot the spring. Shit. And now's the time to insert them into the, uh, into the fork. So that's one done. Now, if you take a close look at the uh, the springs, the spring here, uh, the windings are closer to each other around the bottom of the spring than at the top. So that's the progressive fork springs. Um, I'm just going to check, yes, that they are free of dirt. And this uh, styrofoam, which they were delivered in, Nice, okay. Uh, and I have to get the cap off the other one. That's going to be interesting. It's 11 millimeters or 7 16th, which I don't have, damn it. Ah, f me, man. Okay. Uh, shit. Um, damn. Damn it. I'm stuck. Stuck here. That's a pain in the ass. Oh, man. Nearly, nearly done though. Okay, this this is a pain in my ass. I need seven sixteen hex, which which I don't have. F mm. it pisses me off. <coughs> ah, damn it. Well, I'll see you next week. Right, so here we are. I really would like to wrap this up now uh, because it has been going on for way too long. Uh, this is another day, another time, another life. Uh, so basically you're going to need a, a uh, 716 millimeter hex driver in there to access the, um, the, uh, the top nut right there. So uh, without further ado, let's get cracking. This has been uh, like taking way too long. There we go. You're going to have to remove this and of course be extra careful because there is a bit of a spring tension in there. So while you remove, just press down so that it doesn't land anywhere else than where you want it. There we go, pop. And notice how uh, this is still the original spring right here. And I have on that side already inserted the um, progressive spring. And it's funny to notice how like the, uh, the lengths are different. 
Whoop. Oop. Of course, yep, got a drip of oil there. Right here, so these springs are old and tired. Make sure that it's nice and clean. And I'm going to go with um, putting the, uh, the closer uh, bits at the, uh, at the bottom. Just drop that in. There we go. Nice. Hang on. Give this a bit of a clean. There we go. Ha! Very springy. <clears throat> okay. Next up, to fill it up with some uh, some uh, fork oil. Now I've chosen uh, this uh, uh, 20W fork oil mainly because it's what I have on the shelf. Um, there are different viscosities that you can choose from, uh, but this is the one I have, so this is the one that's going to go in, and I have 0.5 liters in here. And I seem to remember, do you remember when? 190, yep, we need, as, as it says uh, here, we need 190 cc of the stuff. So uh, we have half a liter here. Uh, we're going to use this as sort of a rough guide, I guess. I don't know, we'll see. 190 cc, that is very specific. Let me just get a measuring device first. There you go, just got this uh, measuring uh, jug from the kitchen. She is totally going to kill me. Uh, but it's okay, I can take the heat, I can handle it. She won't notice it's gone uh, until the next time she bakes a cake, for example. She'll be like, have you seen my me measuring jug? And I'll be like, measuring jug? Nope, never seen that in my life. There you go. Perform at your own risk, fellas. So we were saying 190 cc per fork leg. There we go. That is 100. I'll say that's about it. There is going to be a bit of a loss through the viscosity of the stuff, so a little, a little under 200 cc, there you go, that's fine. Um, yeah, okay, tell you what, I'll just take this out. Uh, I will, I should have a um, funnel somewhere. Oh well, f it. We'll do it without the funnel. Wait and see. There you go. Didn't need a funnel in the end. <clears throat> Okay, you can hear that bubbling away, that's fine. Do the same to the other side. One cc equals one milliliter. I checked that, I looked it up. You can hear it bubbling away. Oh, man. Holy sh <laughs> She's actually calling me, man. <laughs> This is no joke. Hello. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> um, <clears throat> of course, I, di I didn't mention I didn't mention that I nicked her. Uh, I think. Okay, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to work uh, work the forks. Right, I think that should do the trick. There you go, you can see the, the oil level. Right there. Now I can finally install my beautiful progressive springs. There we go. With the, uh, the closer 
winds towards the bottom. There we go. Sitting nice and square. And here comes a fun part. I suppose to, there you go. There we go. Ah, the, the spring is going to seat neatly on the cap. And now you just have to, <clears throat> by means of brute force, press this down. And be careful not to cross thread, cross the threads, there we go. And be careful not to release the tension. Otherwise, ah, man. You. I'm just kind of wrestling with my bike. Ah, okay. So that's not going to do it. There we go. That should do the trick. Okay. Feeding this neatly. There we go. Okay. Right, now I need to tighten the front wheel once again. There we go. That should do the trick. Do the same to the other side and then we'll be done. Damn it. Now let's speed run through this. Just wanted to show you something really cool. How satisfying is that? This is like the, the best sound ever. <laughs> okay, one more time. <laughs> okay, moving on. So what started out as a leaky oil seal ended up in a full front end rebuild. I do hope that you found this video interesting. Uh, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment if you did. Um, and do subscribe for more because next up on the uh, Triumph Bonneville maintenance series, I'll call it that for now. Uh, I'm going to address the rear end now. So I'd like to change the rear wheel bearing and clean and lubricate the chain and adjust that. And last but not least, I would like to uh, perform an in-depth maintenance uh, with the engine. So uh, that's going to cover adjusting the uh, chain in between the gearbox and the crankshaft, uh, adjusting the valves, adjusting ignition, timing, and so on and so forth and uh, obviously um, fine-tuning carburetors. So do stick around. It is highly appreciated. Uh, many thanks for watching, and I will be catching you all in the next video. Peace out, everybody. Goodbye.